Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In a previous video in this series, we looked at how to set up this excellent rig from Matrix TSL, part of their Electrical Machines kit, in order to be able to understand how a motor behaves under different operating conditions. And we concluded the previous video by saying that one of the things we really need to understand in order to comprehend how a motor is behaving is to get our heads wrapped around the idea of torque. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. What exactly is torque? So what is torque? What does it mean? Well, torque is sometimes referred to as a force, but that's not quite right. It's more the effect that a force has, and specifically, it is the effect that a force has when it creates a turning motion. Now, we experience this pretty much every day in just day-to-day -day life, so perhaps when we go to open a door, we have to twist the door handle, don't we? So we push down on the door handle, and that force creates a turning motion in the shaft that goes through the door and allows us to enter or exit a room. So torque is really the measurement of the turning effect of a force. So a measurement of the effect of a force when it creates a rotational movement. Let's talk about the SI units that we use for torque next. So when we consider the mathematical symbol for torque, we use the Greek letter tau that looks something like this. So that represents torque when we're doing maths with it. And the unit that we measure torque in is the Newton meter. And therefore, the unit symbol for that will be a capital N and a lowercase m, n, m like that, Newton meters. Now, my apologies if you're watching this in the United States of America, as I believe the unit that you use to measure torque there is the foot pound, I think. Uh, but uh, obviously, uh, under the SI system, we use the Newton meter. And of course, the other area where we might come across this concept of torque is when we're connecting up consumer units or distribution boards, because we know that the circuit breaker screws and the screws in the neutral and earth bars have to be set to certain torque values. And so we get the idea that once we reach a certain value of Newton meters with our torque screwdriver, that that is tight enough. In effect, we've applied enough turning force, if you like, to that screw to get it to the right setting. So let's talk about the mathematical concept of torque and how we find it. Now this is one of those really nice SI units because actually the calculation for finding the value is buried within the SI unit itself. So we just said that torque represented by the Greek letter tau is equal uh, to Newton meters. It is measured in Newton meters. So we'd have a number here, say 2.4 or 2.5 or something like that if we're doing up a screw in a consumer unit. But you see here how you've got the N for Newtons and the M for meters. So what's really nice about that is in algebra where you write two letters next to each other like that, it generally means multiply them together. And actually that's absolutely true in this case. So in order to calculate torque, tau, you simply do the force acting on the object multiplied by the distance that that force is operating at. And of course we've got there our force in Newtons and our distance in meters. So it's a really nice easy formula for us to remember. So we'll just simplify that down. We'll just write that as tau torque is equal to F the force multiplied by the distance. Now we might find that this gets changed out later on in the videos because this distance becomes a very specific component of the rig that we're looking at here. So that may be changed to a different letter, but it always includes this idea of the force acting a certain distance or a certain length away from a given point. Now this concept gives us a deeper insight into our understanding of torque, because if we look at the formula, and again, I'm always very keen to get under the skin of formulas and understand why they're written the way they are and what that represents, we can see here that both force and the distance that force is operating at are both multipliers. We're using both of those to multiply each other in order to get to the torque. So what that means is that if we increase the force, what's going to happen to the torque? Obviously, that's going to be increased. And if we increase the distance that that force is operating at, what's going to happen to the torque? Well, it's also going to go up as well, isn't it? So we've probably actually experienced this concept out there in the real world, where perhaps we've had the use of certain spanners. So this spanner here has a very short handle on it. So that means that if I apply a certain force at this end, and multiply it by the distance, it will give me a value of torque. Now, depending how hard I push it, will 
change that value of torque. But obviously, because this distance here is quite short, that means that the torque that I can apply with this will be relatively low. If, however, I get this spanner, and instead of using that little one, I use this one instead. And if I try and tighten up the same object with this, maybe I'm tightening up a nut or a bolt or something like that. If I apply the same amount of force at this end of this spanner, can you see that I have massively increased the length of my spanner? Therefore, I've massively increased the distance that the torque is operating at. So if we look at our little spanner on there, you can see that maybe that's at least twice the distance away. So that means that I can get twice the torque with this spanner than I can with this spanner, which means that I can effectively do things up tighter and make it easier to undo things by using a spanner with a longer handle. So we've come across that in the real world. So hopefully that's given us a bit of an insight into what we mean by torque, but how are we now gonna apply that to our motor? How are we gonna figure out what torque this motor, when connected to the dynamometer, is supplying? Well, in order to figure that out, we need to use this device down here. Now, this is just a normal weighing scale. So this is just something that we could uh, pop something on there and it would tell us uh, perhaps what we think of as the weight of that object. So when we power the motor up and it starts to turn, it will start to spin the shaft in the dynamometer. But inside the dynamometer here, uh, this is fixed in such a way that it rotates around its central shaft and it's got a certain amount of freedom of movement there. Now, as this starts to rotate, what's gonna happen is that this bit here is going to press down on the scale and that scale is going to give us a particular reading. Now, what reading is that going to give us? Is it going to give us the force that this motor is turning with or will it give us something else? Well, actually it's going to give us something else. It's not going to tell us the force that this is being turned with. We actually need a different concept now. So we really need to get our heads wrapped around the difference between mass and weight. And we'll look at that in the next video. So hopefully in this video we've gained a deeper understanding of what torque is. It's a measurement of the effect of a force acting at a distance that causes a rotational movement. We've seen some practical examples of where we'll come across that in the real world and we've also seen how we can turn that to our advantage to make it easier to tighten things up and undo them. We've also seen that torque is measured in newton meters which also helps us to remember the formula for calculating torque, force times distance. And those are all really critical points that we need to bear in mind for our electrical assessments and exams and also for calculating torque in the real world should we ever need to. So all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.